Hello YouTube, I'm um, going to do a little video here on a Caterpillar 246 skid steer. It's kind of buried in the uh, shop here, tough to get a good picture of it, but those of you that are probably watching this video know what a skid steer looks like anyway. This one was converted to uh, the Lagerine uh, track system. Um, we bought it with a broken connecting rod. There's some of the carnage there, some of the other pieces there. One of those crankshafts back there belongs to this motor. Uh, the reason for the video, this is an early 2000 uh, machine, model year 2000, and these engines are not that common anymore. And Caterpillar, depending on which dealer you talk to, they... Uh, either will tell you it's NLA for no longer available, or they will tell you that <clears throat> it's very expensive in the tune of like $12,000 expensive. Um, this is the Cat uh, 3034 series engine. I think the group family is 147-1234. Uh, when in reality, this is a Perkins engine. Um... I believe, if the internet is correct, Caterpillar bought Perkins back in 1998 for $3 billion or something like that. But uh, but I believe that Caterpillar or Perkins still produced engines for entities other than Caterpillar after that. Um, so what you have here is an engine that if you talk to Caterpillar, they would tell you it's a 3034 or a 147-1234. But it is also a Perkins 704-30T in this case because it's a turbocharged application. So that's where the plot kind of thickens. Um, Perkins made two different variations of the 704-30T. Uh, one was a naturally aspirated application, and one was turbocharged, like what came in this cat skid steer. Um, the naturally aspirated ones, this particular core engine came out of a uh, Daewoo skid steer, uh, 60 horsepower, whereas the turbocharged iter uh, version of it is 80 horsepower. So you're left kind of scratching your head with Caterpillar here because... The options are pretty limited. Um, to be quite honest, I didn't believe when I bought this machine that um, I would have this hard of a time finding an engine for it. I bought it with the intention of fixing it and using it on a project we got going, uh, building a house and a shop. Um, kind of what we do, we buy things broken and we fix them. But probably if I'd done a little more research on this particular application, I don't know if I would have still bought it because of the difficulty getting parts for it. Um, having said that, the reason for today's video, I wanted to go over the solution we came up with. Um, obviously that block is no good. When it broke the connecting rod, obviously it put a hole in the block. Um, this cylinder lost oil. This picture's not gonna show up very well, but this cylinder is just totally wiped out. But more than that, you know, you could maybe bore this and put a huge pipe plug in it and you could sleeve that cylinder but more than that it's spun number two crank bearing uh, main bearing that's kind of what precipitated the whole incident was number two bearing spun number two cylinder starved for oil um and then obviously it broke so when the crank when the rod broke it also got up into the water jacket and cracked the water jacket so those are the last two strikes against saving this block. One was the spun bearing on the main saddle, and the other one was the water jackets are broken. So it's kind of a scrap at that point. So the way we overcame it was we used this serial number right here off the block, or casting number, three, I can't read it. I think it's three, seven, one, or three, seven, four, one, one, 03A 
forward slash four. Um, I called a local engine supply company, RF Engines. Uh, their website is Diesel Cranks. They kind of specialize in equipment engines. They told me they would get back with me after they looked through their inventory. They called back and they said, yeah, we have got uh, these engines here with the almost identical casting number on the block except for the last digit. That last digit being a one instead of a four. So I loaded, I loaded that block in my truck and I drove out there to look at the two engines that they had, this one and another one. They were different. Um, the first differences I noticed were the turbo drain back hole, the oil hole coming up out of the turbo. On the turbo application, it drains into here. On this engine block that was a normally or naturally aspirated block, the emboss is there, but the hole is not. Uh, similar situation on the other side. There's a pretty um, extensive crankcase ventilation system on this. It draws from here, and it drains back down here. I'm sorry, I had the camera wrong. Drains back down here. Again, the naturally aspirated application did not have those two features. You can see the emboss is here for the drain, but there's no tapped hole. Um, it was the same situation here. This hole was not here. I just drilled that in yesterday. I probably could give you a picture, but you get the idea. It looked very similar to this. There was a cast pad there, but the hole wasn't there. Wasn't an easy hole to drill. You can see, I don't know if you can see or not. Let me see if I can find a flashlight real quick. There's a plastic baffle on the inside of that, uh, on the inside of the high pressure fuel pump cavity there, that black baffle, that screws into that. That baffle doesn't have a lot of room next to that cast wall back there. Took a bit of fiddling around to get it laid out correctly, um, but I got it. It's in. This feature down here, my plan is to just put a bulkhead in the oil pan down below to let the positive crankcase vent drain. Uh, bulkhead similar to... What is that? Bulkhead similar to this, we'll just drill a hole in the pan and, you know, put this nut on the inside, probably tack weld it to the pan on the inside, and then run that drain back into here. Um, Caterpillar had that drain below the oil level. This is the tube that threaded into the block here, and this extended all the way down to the oil pan. So they obviously want this below the oil level, whereas if we put a, a bulkhead in the pan, that'll be below the oil level. The turbo drain here is above the oil level. Now, if you notice where it broke the block, there was a threaded port there. So I think I'm gonna reroute the turbo drain to that same threaded port on this motor here. So instead of coming here, the oil will drain out of the turbo, just come down, do maybe a 45 and a 45, and get over to here. Sorry about the camera work. Um, so those are the three physical differences that I noticed when I inspected the engine on the outside when I made the decision to buy this short block rotating assembly from RF Engines. This got me a block, it got me a, a good crank, it got me a good set of rods, which obviously I didn't have with that engine. So I thought I was well on my way to getting this skid steer put back together. Uh, $750 for that short block, including a rotating assembly. The rebuild kit uh, from Highway and Heavy was a thousand. Um, machine work, cylinder head is there. The uh, you've already seen the block, you know, I think I had like 400 bucks in the machine work. So I thought I was well on my way to getting it put back together, but. I don't have a good picture of this. 
let me stop this and get a picture of it and I'll, well, I can show you. What I didn't know when I first inspected these, these are the oil galleys. You can see this is where your oil filter would go. This is the uh, oil pressure sending unit. This is the line that feeds the turbocharger here. So what you see here is the end of the oil galley. There's one, two, three, or one, two, three <clears throat> oil galleys here. This oil galley feeds the piston cooling jets that are, uh, I can't really see them, but you have to trust me, they're, they're mounted up in the bottom of the block on each cylinder. And on the turbocharged application, they spray oil on the inside of the dome of the piston once the um, piston, or once the oil pressure reaches a certain level. The, they look something like this. They're a cooling jet. Uh, they're mounted with a banjo fitting like this. That banjo fitting banjo bolt is a 3 8 24 and it has a check ball in it. So once the oil pressure gets to a certain level, this opens, allowing oil to flow through here. And this squirts oil up on the inside of the piston. Unfortunately, I found out after I got halfway through this endeavor with rebuilding the engine, this block has the two lower oil galleys, but the upper one was never drilled at the factory. I actually had sent this block out with the incorrect assumption that those cooling jets were tapped into this galley. And the machine shop, it was a separate machine shop from who did the the uh, rebuild type machining. They drill, they spot face the locations to mount the cooling jets. And once they drilled the holes for the 3 8 24 bolt, they didn't hit anything. It didn't break into this cooling pass or this oil passage like I thought it would. Upon closer inspection, the oil passage that it should have broke into was here. And this block is not equipped with that. Um, so I'm not going to be able to use the piston cooling jets. Uh, I know there's a lot of different ways it could be attacked. This is a personal use machine. It's not going back into like company service. It's just my own personal machine. The gentleman that did the secondary machining on the cooling jets is pretty well known in the performance community. Uh, you can look him up on Facebook or whatever. It's a mountain machine. They do a lot of 12 valve Cummins work. He just said, don't worry about it. Put an EGT gauge on it. Keep an eye on the EGTs and run it you know if it starts getting hot cool it down that's sort of what i do with my duramax truck so that's what i'm going to do um i'm going to proceed with the rebuild install some gauges so i can kind of monitor the motor but uh, uh the reason i wanted to make this video is to let you know if you've got one of these early cat 246 skid steers and you you end up in a situation like this where you got a catastrophic failure if you want, there is another option. You can do what I'm doing and build an engine from a Daewoo skid steer, or they put these engines in Heister fork trucks. They put these engines in uh, several different things. I don't know what all they put them in, but Perkins, you know, still sold these engines on the open market. Uh, you can look for that casting number. What do I do with that flashlight? Or if you're just looking for the Perkins number, you know, there's, I don't know if that's going to show up or not. I apologize. Can't seem to get the light right. But there's the Perkins tag. And right here, you'll notice this, this engine family number starts with a UA. On the turbocharged application, this engine family would start with a UC. Um, I had no luck finding a UC block, so I'm going to do the best I can with the UA. You'll notice the position of that tag is the exact same position that Caterpillar puts their tag that calls this a 3034 or a 1471234 engine family. Um, so that's why I'm making the video. There are options for you. Cat, the one dealer that I found that said they could get me this engine totally rebuilt from cat it was like a twelve thousand dollar price tag 
with a $5,000 core. I know those numbers seem crazy, but that is what I was quoted. And that was just the one dealer that said they could get it. The other dealer said they couldn't even get it. $5,000 core. And if your block had a hole in it, they kept, uh, I think they kept $2,000 of your core. So it went from being a $12,000 purchase to being a $14,000 purchase which for a 20 year old skid steer was just crazy for me. I was never gonna do that. So going this route, paid 750 for the short block with a rotating assembly. I paid $1,000 for parts. I've got four, well actually the failed piston cooling jets was another 300. So I've got about $700 into machine work on that block and cylinder head and crank. Um, so for under 3500 bucks, this will be running and moving again. Um, yes, it would have been great to be able to get a UC block where I could have used the cooling jets. Obviously, once I get it up and running, I can, if there's interest in this, I can recap. Um, if the EGTs uh, seem to go high, if, if, if I thought that not using the cooling jets was a bad idea, I can come back and revisit that. But that's what I'm going to do. Maybe this video helps somebody. Maybe it doesn't. We're going to start building this engine tonight. We just got it back from the machine shop a few days ago. Um, we got this hole drilled. That was a bit of a nail biter because you obviously only get one shot at it. Uh, we made a cold roll insert here. This uh, wasn't here on the UC motor. Switch these around on the cap motor. The or on the Perkins motor, this was up here and the oil, cooler, or oil uh, filter was here. So I switched those around. I added the feed line for the turbocharger for over here. So the differences between the two engines have been addressed to the best of my ability. So I'm going to go ahead and build the engine or rebuild the engine as uh, normally would. And uh, I'll keep you posted if there's any interest. But it is a much more economical way to get an older 246 back up and going than... Uh, than $14,000 for a replacement engine from CAT. Um, this does have the track system on it. It does have a brand new set of tracks. The life of the undercarriage is not as nice as the tracks. Obviously, those were put on, you know, they put this system on, they wore a set of tracks out, they put another set of tracks on. So, you know, the undercarriage life is not the same as the tracks. But it was a concrete company that owned this before I got it. They had it serviced through Michigan Cat here in Southeast Michigan. I got the service records. It got a lot of new hydraulic parts uh, since 2016. Uh, drive motor on the left side, new turbocharger, several oil leaks were fixed. Uh, there was other stuff that Michigan Cat had done to this. So those are the reasons I decided to go ahead and save it. Pretty extensive service at Cat fairly recent it is a high hour machine but you know there's been a lot of service done to it it's been converted to tracks a property that i'm on is uh clay gets muddy and slimy real easy so i wanted a track machine not a, a wheel machine if i could didn't have the money to spend on a newer track machine this seemed like a good compromise so that is the route i went um i have made a video in probably seven or eight years so uh i just thought this might help some people Comment if you want me to do a follow-up on um, if I think the omitting the piston cooling jets turned out to be a bad idea. Thank you very much, and comment if you want more feedback or more follow-up. Thanks. Have a great day.